Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This episode is part of a series of episodes on how Islam treats non Muslims. And today's question is How does the Quran do justice to and show tolerance towards non Muslims? If you want to know the answer to this question, please join me in the following couple of minutes. Alhamdulillah, was salatu was salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa lahu wa ba'd. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah, and may Allah send His peace and blessings upon our Honorable Prophet, his family members, his companions, and whosoever follows them until the Day of Judgment. Dear brothers and sisters, Islam teaches us how to deal with others. It teaches us how to treat our parents, our children, our neighbors, our colleagues, our friends, and all the people around us. Islam even teaches us how to treat animals and birds and how to treat our own body. This beautiful religion teaches us how to treat our fellow Muslims as well as people of other religions, people who are not Muslims. Dear brothers and sisters, if we carefully read the Quran, we will find that it has a number of verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us and instructed us how to treat non-Muslims especially when we are living in a non-Muslim country or when we are living amongst non-Muslims. In these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows clear justice, mercy and tolerance to non-Muslims. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises them, He at the same time encourages us to follow in their footsteps when it comes to good deeds. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala severely criticizes the people of the book in some verses of Surah Al-Imran because of their disobedience to him. But in, so, in the following verse, what does he say? He says, Laysu sawa'a. They are not all alike. There are some amongst the people of the book who are upright. They recite Allah's revelations throughout the night, prostrating in prayer. They believe in Allah and the last day. They encourage good and forbid evil. And they encourage one another in doing good. They are truly amongst the righteous. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised that group of the people of the book who are steadfast, who are firm and obedient to him. Likewise, Allah again after mentioning the serious mistakes of the people of the book he, said that among, he says that amongst them, there is a group of people who are balanced. Minhum ummatun muqtasida. And in another Quranic verse, Allah also praises them by saying, Those we have given the book, they recite it as it should be recited. They follow it as it should be followed. Indeed, they believe in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says about them, وَمِن قَوْمِ مُوسَىٰ أُمَّةٌ يَهْدُونَ بِالْحَقِّ وَبِهِ يَعْدِلُونَ And from among the people of Moses, there is a group who guide others with the truth and establish justice accordingly. Allah again praises them in Surah Al-Imran when He says, وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مَنْ إِنْ تَأْمَنْهُ بِقِنْطَارٍ يُؤَدِّهِ إِلَيْكَ Amongst the people of the book, you will find some who are honest and trustworthy that if you were to give them a heap of gold, if you were to entrust them with a big amount of gold, they will return it to you without taking anything from it. Yet there are others who, if entrusted with a single coin, they will not repay it until you constantly demand it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again shows justice and balance towards the people of the book. Imam Ibn Jarir report, reported on the authority of Masruq, one of the great successors. Masruq said 
some Jews, Christians, and Muslims were sitting together. And each group started boasting about their own religion. The Christians, they said, نَحْنُ أَفْضَلُ مِنْكُمْ We are better than you, Jews and Muslims. And the Jews said, we are better than you, Muslims and Christians. And the Muslims also said the same thing. We are better than you both. We are better than you, Jews and Christians. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that Quranic verse in Surah An-Nisa, which reads, لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Divine grace is neither by your wishes, nor by the wishes of the people of the book. Your simple desires mean nothing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge you. He is going to reward you based on your actions and your deeds. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the following verse, مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَ بِهِ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَ بِهِ وَلَا يَجِدْ لَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا Whoever commits evil shall be rewarded accordingly, and he shall find no protector or helper beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah also says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَدُخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ نَقِيرًا but, but those who do good deeds with a male or female and have faith, those shall enter paradise and they shall not be wronged in the least. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again shows justice and balance towards the people of the book. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah also encourages us to treat non-Muslims fairly and kindly. And even if our parents, even if your parents happen to be non-Muslims, you have to treat them kindly and gently. You have to be dutiful to them. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطُعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَةً If your parents pressure you to associate partners with Allah, do not obey them. But does it mean that you become rude? You become impolite and aggressive to them? No. وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَةً You need to keep their company. You need to treat them kindly and gently and to be dutiful to them. Uh, it is reported that Asma bint Abi Bakr, may Allah be pleased with her, she migrated from Mecca to Medina. And when she arrived in Medina, she had left her mother back in Mecca. Her mother was not a Muslim. And her mother followed her. She came to the door of Asma and she knocked on Asma's door, asking her permission to enter. When Asma opened the door, she said, My dear mother, stay here until I go to the Prophet wasallam, and ask him whether I am allowed to allow my mother to enter my house. So Asma came to the Prophet wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, my mother came, inna ummi qadimat wa hiya My mother came and she is showing some love for me. Afa asiluha? Shall I keep good relation with my mother? Shall I strengthen my relationship with her? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Naam, sili ummak. Yes indeed, you have to keep good relation with your mother. This is despite the fact that her mother, her mother was not a Muslim. Dear brothers and sisters, Islam encourages us to treat our neighbors kindly and fairly. And this verse about good treatment of neighbors in Surah An-Nisa, the exegetes of the Quran, they say that this verse is general and it applies to Muslim neighbors and non-Muslim neighbors as well. Imam Mujahid ibn Jabr, one of the great Quran exegetes and one of the great successors, he said, once we were sitting with Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, one of the Prophet's companions, while his servant was skinning a slaughtered goat, he was removing the skin of a goat that he just slaughtered. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As said to him, Oh my dear servant, be quick and make sure that when you have finished cutting the meat of this goat, that you begin with our Jewish neighbor. And he said that three times. So one of those who were sitting with Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he said, أصلحك الله اليهودي بدأنا به May Allah guide you. What is this that you are saying? Shall we give some of this meat as a gift to someone who is not a Muslim? Someone who is a Jew? So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As said, 
إني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوصي بالجار حتى حسبنا أنه سيورثه He said, I heard the messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, advising us on the rights of our neighbors until I thought that he would assign a portion of inheritance to him. So, at that, to that extent, so my dear brothers and sisters, the point is, we have to treat all the people kindly and fairly, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. We have to, put, to always put in front of our eyes and implement the Quranic verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna." Speak kind words to all people. It doesn't matter whether these people are Muslims or, un, or non-Muslims. This is how Islam guides us. This is how Islam instructs us. We have to be fair and kind to all the people. With this, we come to the end of our episode. Thank you for watching us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.